If you have ever wanted your own home media server with automatic downloads, remote access, and zero monthly fees, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Using a Raspberry Pi, perfect if you are just getting started, and using a much more powerful Android NAS, ideal for performance and long-term expansion. We will cover everything you need, Plex, Radar, Sonar, Torrents, Network Sharing, Remote Access, and VPNs. Before we dive in, here's a quick breakdown of how these services work together. Plex is your media server. It organizes and streams your movies, series, and shows to any device. Radar and Sonar are automation tools. Radar handles movies, Sonar handles TV series. They both watch for new releases and add them to your download list automatically. Prowler is the indexer manager. It connects Radar and Sonar to Torrent and other search engines. Transmission, or Qubit Torrent, is the actual download client. Once Radar or Sonar finds a file via Prowler, it sends it here to download. I will also show you Tautuli. This service monitors Plex activity. You can track what has been watched, by whom, and when. Other service I'm using is Samba or SMB, which lets you share the actual video files across your local network. And finally, I'm using WireGuard VPN. This VPN lets you securely connect your home network from anywhere in the world, giving you full access to your shared devices, media library, and even to manage interfaces as if you were in the same local network. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to build your own automated home media server, accessible from anywhere, and adjust it to your budget. Let's start with the Raspberry Pi setup. I use a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4GB of RAM connected to a powered USB hub with around 10TB of external hard drives. On it, I install it everything natively on Raspbian, without Docker. Plex for streaming, Radar and Sonar to automatically download movies and series, Prolar to manage indexers, Transmission for torrents, Tautuli for tracking what have been watched, and Samba to share drives over my network, which I explain in more detail in this video. Also, I use WireWare VPN, which I also explain how to configure it in this other video. It worked great for a long time, and with a recent case upgrade, including a nice tower cooler with RGB and a tiny OLED screen for system stats, the Pi even looks looks like a mini PC tower. I will leave links to everything you see in this video in the description. And if you find it useful, please remember to subscribe. I have to say that the Pi, despite the small size, it handles all my media needs 24-7. I also use it to share my library of movies and series with close friends, which help us cut down on streaming services, subscriptions like Netflix, HBO, and that type of things, so we can keep everything in one convenient place. Now I will show you how to set up everything in the Raspberry Pi, but if you want to skip until I show you how is the link station and to check the timestamps below. Okay, so let's start by installing Plex in the Raspberry Pi. The installation process is very simple. Let's follow the steps on this page, which I will leave in the description, and we will run the commands one by one until everything is ready, and we can enter the Plex web portal. At the moment we have nothing to add, so let's move on to the rest of the services. To get started with Sonar, I asked ChatGPT for the steps, as there are no specific steps for the Raspberry Pi on the official website, but the process is very simple. First, we update the repository and system packages, then we install the dependencies with the command you saw on the screen, and finally, we go to the official Sonar page and use the command that appears for Debian, as this is the system on which the Raspberry Pi OS is based. Finally, wait for the process to finish and open the web portal. Once inside, I recommend you configuring the security as the web form and entering a username and a password. Now that Sonar is ready, let's move on to Radar. Luckily for Radar, as for Prolar, we have a community created script that simplifies the whole installation process. I will leave the link in the description, but I recommend you read the whole page. For now, what we are going to do is run the command that appears in the guide, and once the program starts, we will select Radar to continue with the installation. The process is very similar to Sonar, we need to hit enter several times and wait for the web portal to be ready and deployed. Once inside, we continue to configure the username and the password in the same way as for Sonar, and we can repeat the same for Prolar, as Prolar is is also included in the installation script. The only thing we will do is run it again and select the Prolar option. We press enter several times and wait for the process to finish to enter the web portal and configure the user and the password again. 
Now, as we have ProLar open, we are going to add several indexers. To do this, we can click on the Add Indexers button and a list will appear. You can add as many as you like, look all the filters and decide which one suits you the best. These indexers will allow Radar and Sonar to find these series and the movies on the Torrent Network to download later all of them. So the more and the better indexers you add, the easier it will be to find what you are looking for. Finally, when we see the notifications from the portals, we see that there are some problems. This is because we have to finish the configuration. The first thing we will need is a torrent download client. In my case on the Raspberry Pi I like to use transmission but you can use qubit torrent or other ones. Personally I like transmission because it is easier to configure. I will show you how to install it. To install it you can see the commands I'm using. I recommend you stopping the video if you need it. But basically we have installed transmission, we are going to stop the service and now we can edit the configuration file as ChatGPT recommends. It is important to make all these changes to be able to access the web portal later without any type of problem. Once the configuration is done, we can open the transmission portal and start adding torrents or magnet links. Now we need to add transmission to both Sonar and Radar. To do this, go to the configuration, download client section and click on add new. Select transmission and here fill in all the details we configured earlier and repeat the process with Radar. Once this is done, all we need to do is add both Sonar and Radar to Prolar so that they are all connected. Let's see how it's done. In both Radar and Sonar, we need to go to configuration, general and copy the API key. Now go to Prolar, Settings, Applications and click on Add New. We need to select both Sonar and Radar in the same way, so choose one of them, enter its API key and click Save. Now all the devices are connected and ready to work. All we have to do is browse both Sonar and Radar for films and series and they will automatically download as soon as they are available. They will then be moved to the folders configured in Plex and automatically display so you can see it in any of your devices. For example, we will search for the solo leveling series in Sonar. When we click on it, we have to choose the path where we want the series to be saved. Once added, we can click on the magnifying glass icon to start searching the indexers. After a while, it will detect all the chapters and send them directly to transmission to start downloading. When the download is complete, the episodes will appear in Plex if we have monitored these folders. This way we can have our own multimedia server on the Raspberry Pi fully automated. Eventually, I needed more power and better storage options, so I upgraded to the Link Station N2 NAS. It has the Intel N100 processor, 16GB of RAM, 4 M2 SSD slots, and two 2.5 inches drive base, so you can insert HDDs or SSDs here. And also some USB ports, so I will reuse all my existing HDDs from the Raspberry Pi setup to this one. I will leave the link to the Link Station N2 NAS in the description, so if you want to check more in-depth reviews or more technical reviews, you can do it because this is the first proper NAS I have and I'm basically testing how it works. But I also wanted to share my actual setup. Finally, in addition to the 10 terabytes of HDDs, I have added 1 terabyte M2 SSD so I can run Docker containers and download files in this drive. The system runs and writes, which is perfect for home media servers, is easy to use, it has built-in support for Docker and virtual machines, it handles mixed drive sizes, and it has a great community and templates, so it's a huge step up in performance and flexibility. If you want me to show a complete and detailed installation of the automated system we just saw on the Raspberry Pi but on Android, leave it in the comments. Let's take a look at what Android offers in the Link Station N2. On the one hand, we have the community applications. This is where I took all the images for Plex, Sonar, Radar, etc. There are native applications and others with Dockers, most of them, and they are super easy to install. Just look off the name and hit install. Configuration is also very easy and with a little bit of chat GPT, you can configure what you want. On the other hand, the system comes with WireGuard VPN by default and it is super easy to configure and in a few clicks you are ready to go. Finally, I want to show you my USB connected hard drives. As you can see, it recognizes them without any type of problem and thanks to Samba or SMB, I can share them on the network without having to format them or anything. So I didn't lose any data. However, now that I have a NAS that supports SSDs, I will gradually buy more storage to get rid of the USB drives as soon as possible because they are slower and less reliable. I have to say that the system is very intuitive, easy to use and there are many tutorials on the internet compared to the problems that can give the configuration of a system completely manually as we have seen above with the Raspberry Pi. And in terms of performance, of course the CPU of this NAS is much more powerful than that of the Raspberry Pi and it is 64 bits architectures. So we will not have compatibility problems with applications as happens with ARM. 
Okay, so let's compare both setups now. First, we have the Raspberry Pi, which is very cheap. A uh, Raspberry Pi 4 is one of the most cost-effective ways to start building a home server. You can set up a full media center with minimal investment using maybe hardware that you already have. It consumes very little power, so it's very efficient, making it ideal for 24-7 operations without adding much to your electricity bill. Is great for beginners, this setup is perfect for learning, you will get to know how Linux works, how to manage services, and how everything ties together in a server environment. But it's limited in CPU and RAM, you will hit performance limits quickly if you try to run multiple services or stream high quality media to several devices. You can only use USB drives, you can rely on external USB drives, but this can lead to lower performance and increased risk of disconnecting or failure, especially with cheaper hubs. And if you connect more than one USB drive, you will need a powered USB hub instead of a normal one. In the other hand, we have the LX Station N2 with the Android system. System. Here we can run Docker and virtual machines because Android comes with native support for Docker containers and virtual machines. You can run almost any service or app you want, from media servers to home automation platforms, all from the same interface. It has also a scalable storage. You can add hard drives of any size, mix and match them, and expand over time without losing data or reformatting existing drives. It also supports native VPN with WireWare, it's easy to set up and integrates perfectly with the rest of your system. It is also more powerful and responsive, but this is related to the hardware because here we have a better CPU, more RAM and in general a more powerful system, so we can handle multiple simultaneous streams, better transcoding tasks and background services without slowing down. But the bigger downside is the higher cost. Building an Android server involves a bigger initial investment. You will need a case, motherboard, CPU, RAM, or buying directly a device that is already built with Android, like this one. So in general, it's not that cheap. So if you are just getting started on a tight budget, I recommend you the Raspberry Pi. If you are getting serious about media, automation, and you want a better system, I would recommend you something like this with Android or a Synology NAS. I think building your own media server is a very fun and regarding project. Doesn't matter if you are starting with a Raspberry Pi or you are going straight to a full NAS. There is no perfect setup for everyone, so it really depends on your needs and your budget. But once it's up and running, having your own automated system for managing and streaming content is a game changer. Start simple, take your time, and upgrade as you go. What matters is that you take control of your media and make it work for you. Let me know in the comments if you're using a Raspberry Pi, a Synology, an Array system, or if you have something completely different. If you want to see how I configure remote access with Wireward, check out this video. And if you want to see how I set up the Raspberry Pi for sharing my drives into my network, check this another one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.